Hey everyone, I wanted to walk you through my DIY solar setup here. So just to give you a little bit of background, uh, my wife and I had some interest in uh, installing some solar here in our house. Uh, to do the full uh, solar for our house, very expensive to do. So rather than going that route, what I was contemplating was just simply doing some solar shedding. So offloading some of the circuits of the house over to solar um, to see if we could potentially save some money. At the very least, if we're not saving a whole bunch of money, uh, we are certainly being more green. So let's first talk about uh, the unit down here that I've got. So I am using the Pecron E3600LFP. I have, uh, as you can see here, I've got one uh, solar input here, and we'll talk more about the solar here in a bit, uh, but I do have one solar input here. The unit itself actually has three. It's got this, uh, 12 volt to 30 volt max, and then it's got two uh, 32 volt to 150 volt max. And as you can see, each one of these uh, is 1200 watt max times two. So that would be 2400 watts there. Uh, I actually have uh, 1200 watts of solar panels installed. So that's what is uh, feeding into this guy. I am shooting this uh, in the morning. The sun is not up yet. So as you can see, we actually have no input coming in here. Uh, and presently we're using uh, roughly 70 watts of electricity. Uh, now this thing, this unit here comes with a whole bunch of uh, outputs here, right? So we've got our standard uh, wall output here. We've got a whole bunch of uh, USB. We've got 12 volt over here. We actually have wireless charging on top. Uh, I, I don't use any of that, don't care about any of that, don't, don't really need any of that. The only one that I am using, and the only one that I care about here, is the 30 amp output. Which, as you can see, I have a cable plugged into that presently. And that comes up here to our generator transfer switch. <clears throat> so this generator transfer switch, I actually have the uh, instruction booklet right there. It's Nature's Generator 120 volt non-automatic power transfer switch. Uh, it says four circuits, 15 amp, and six circuits, uh, 30 amp model. Um, I'm using the six circuit 30 amp model here. And as you can see, I've got six here. Uh, the Nature's Generator six circuit model comes with uh, six 15 amp breakers. You can swap out one and two uh, to be 20 amp breakers if you want. I have not done that yet. Um, I'm simply just uh, using the 15 amp breakers. Uh, so for this, this was a pretty simple install. All I had to do was take off the, the cover here on my main panel, figure out which of the 16, which of the 16, which of the six circuits I wanted to uh, move over here to the transfer switch. Very simple process to do. Uh, there's essentially a whole bunch of wires coming out of this guy here that go up into the panel here, and you remove the hot wire going into uh, the circuit breaker here connect the red wire for this circuit into that circuit breaker And then there's also a black wire that corresponds to each one of these circuits here and you simply uh, cap that off with the uh, Hot wire that you took off from the circuit coming out of here And effectively once you do that if it's over here on L that means it's online It's coming here out of the grid if I flip it over to G, so like 1 and 3 are, you'll see that those light up. That is being powered by uh, this guy here. So once that's installed, uh, it's just as simple as plugging in this 30 amp plug. Uh, you connect it here, and then you connect it here into the transfer switch, and then you can uh, flip on the circuits uh, that you want to power uh, from the solar generator here. I, As I said, I have six circuits. Um, those are all tied in over here. I only have two on at the moment. And the reason for that is I'm actually testing uh, to kind of see what I can, can't run off from this thing. I wasn't planning on running all six circuits off from this, but in the event that I wanted to switch one of them over to solar, um, I do have that option now. And I think if, if I go back and look at the panel over here, I think I've got all of the 15 uh, amp circuits uh, presently connected up to this thing. Like I think everything that was in here that's 15 amp is now over here in this box. Everything else that I've got over here is either a 20, a 30, or a 50 amp, um, which obviously the 30 and the 50 amp won't run on here. 
like I said, the 20 will, but I'd have to swap out uh, breakers one and two uh, to be able to do that. So again, just running 15 amp, and at the moment I have two uh, circuits on. So what are the circuits here? Uh, circuit one here is uh, all of the bedrooms in the house. So that's running uh, everything in the bedrooms. That's uh, ceiling fan and lights. That's outlets. All of those, for whatever reason, this is an older house. They're on, on one circuit. So that's that one. And then the other one here is we put in an addition uh, earlier uh, this year. And this is running all of the lights uh, for that. So yeah, it's a pretty simple setup and uh so far it's been working very well there is one more circuit on here that i do want to run on a continuous basis from the solar generator and that is my furnace fan and uh, at the moment i don't have enough solar input to be able to run the furnace on a continuous basis while also running these two circuits so at the moment if we look here I am currently at 42% battery. It is uh, about 7.15 in the morning. The sun isn't actually gonna come up and hit the solar panels until about 10, 10.30 in the morning. And that's kind of when we're gonna start to get a continuous input on this thing. So with the furnace running uh, overnight and uh, those two, cir two circuits on that I just showed you, uh, we actually don't have enough battery here to be able to power all three of those circuits. So with that said, I have purchased an expansion battery, which effectively doubles the amount of uh, battery that I have. That's not here yet, uh, but once that comes, I should be able to switch back over, or switch the furnace back over and be able to run that continuously uh, from this guy. So, but yeah, so that is the hookup here inside of the house. And uh, next we'll go ahead and take a look at the solar panels. All right, so we are now outside here at my solar panels. I live in Michigan and it is kind of windy at the moment, so I'm hoping you can hear me okay. Uh, but this is my DIY solar array. As you can see, I have four panels here. Each panel has a maximum of 300 watts for a total of 1200 watts in total. And I think technically these go a little bit higher than that because they are dual faced. I I think it's like 20% higher, but I'm not entirely positive on that. The reason I wanted to get dual faced was because, because of living in Michigan, because it does snow, uh, in the winter time when it is potentially mostly overcast, I'm hoping that some of the reflection behind the panels from the snow uh, will help to generate some power as well. So for the mounts here, what I did was I've got six four by four posts so three in the front here and then uh, three in the back and uh, bury those in the ground in in concrete now the frost line here in michigan is about 42 inches i was not at all able to get down to 42 inches to bury these posts uh, once i hit about 30 inches or so i came to this rock layer and it was like massive uh massive boulder sized rocks that i could not get through at all with my post hole diggers. So that's about where they sit is about 30 inches. I think the maximum I was able to get on one of them was about 32, 33 inches. Uh, so still not even three feet. Uh, so I'm curious to see how this is gonna do uh, once we get through the winter, right? With the frost and everything, we'll see how it goes. But for now, this is what I have as my setup. So again, three posts in the front, three in the back. I've got it tied together here embraced with a uh, uh, two by four in the front. And then I have uh, two two by fours in the back right so one here at the bottom and then there's one up here uh, at the top running across these two by fours and these two by fours here by the way um, that the uh, panels are attached to these are cut at a 45 degree angle so my because obviously these don't move the permanent uh, degree is set here to 45 degrees which based on everything i've read for my location here in michigan is a pretty good uh, all around um, setting here for uh, fixed solar panels. So for the uh, uh, mounting of the solar panels here, I have two two by sixes running across the uh, two by fours that I've cut at the 45 degree angle. Uh, I've got these brackets here. There's uh, four per solar panel. Those are attached on uh, the back side of the solar panel. And then they screw down into uh, the two by six that I've got running across here. Now, don't tell anybody, but uh, the uh, solar array mount that I've got here 
is a bit out of square. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go into detail as to why, but let's just say I got a little bit out of square. Uh, fortunately, that doesn't really matter. It holds everything just fine. And uh, I'm okay with the fact that it's a little out of square. So, uh, But that's the front end of the panels here. Let's go around here to the back end. As we go to the back end, I'm going to show you the panels that I'm using here. So there is the stat sheet for those, as you can see, uh, rated for a max power of 300 watts. And I have mine wired in series, which means I have the uh, positive uh, connected to the negative on down the line. And then here at the very end, I have the uh, negative connected to an extension because I have to run it all the way down here uh, to go into my DC disconnect, which I'll talk about in just a second. So the wires, just to get them up out and out of the way, my wife used this Velcro tape. Not quite sure how that's gonna survive the winter. I'm thinking it's just a temporary option, but we'll see. And then I still have to find uh, some more permanent solution to keep the, uh, the PV wires here up on the two by four. Uh, I'm just using zip ties at the moment. I know those aren't gonna last out here in the sun, uh, but again, just using that as a temporary solution until I figure out something uh, better. So I have the positive and the negative for those coming down into this uh, DC disconnect that I've purchased. And if we look, I'm gonna come up here to show you, you can see that I have a ground wire coming out of this end solar panel here. If we, I gotta go on down the line here because the sun's in a poor spot for the camera. But if you look on down the line here, you can see that I have a grounding bracket or grounding lug connected to each of the solar panels. And then I have uh, two per solar panel with the exception of the very first one on the line here. Um, and I'm just running the excess wire that I had from running the uh, power from the array up to the house, which I'll talk about here in just a second. But once I got down here to the last one, I just used some of my uh, leftover uh, grounding wire that I used inside the house. Uh, so that's why that one is uh, bare. But here is my DC disconnect. So if I need to work on anything out here, I can quickly uh, shut this off. And I just have that coming down here to uh, conduit. So within the conduit, I've got uh, three different direct berry wires. I did use direct berry, so I do not have conduit in the ground. Uh, this is a six gauge wire. Again, it's rated for direct berry. I have one of those coming up here. This is the, the positive. That's coming up in here to the positive side. And then I have the negative and the ground wire coming up here into uh, this side. If we look here, right, so I've got that running up in conduit just to protect the wire from here. And then I actually have a, a conduit elbow underneath the ground for the wire to come up in. But like I said, the wire itself is direct berry. So I have that running uh, all the way up here to the house. So let's go and follow that. Okay, so we're up here at the house now. Uh, for the, the wire, again, I ran it directly along the, the foundation of the house here. And then when I had to go out, and the reason I had to go out and around is because we have this large uh, maple tree there and there's roots that go all the way out here. So I had to go out and around those roots. You can see the solar array there in the background. But I had to go out and around those roots because uh, there was no way I was gonna trench through those. And then I've got the wire running up through another uh, elbow here and then up through this conduit here and I have that going into another uh, disconnect here. So this one I've mounted sideways just so I can attach it to uh, the side of the house but again I've got the wires the, those are the six gauge wires coming in on the one end and then on the other end here I just have regular PV wire and then more of that uh, six gauge uh, grounding wire uh, coming out of there and going into the house. And once it goes into the house, that's going back into uh, the little area there where I've got the uh, power panel, I've got the Pecron, and then I've got that uh, generator transfer switch. All right, so I'm back inside here at the Pecron. I wanted to talk about a few more things here. Firstly, the noise. Hopefully you can hear that. So what you're hearing there are the fans built into this unit. So uh, at maximum input, we're not quite there yet, because again, this can take in 1200 watts uh, per input here. And 
as I noted, I've got 1200 watts in solar panels. Right now we're making about 1030-ish watts of power there. Uh, but at that input, uh, the fans are on and they're running quite high. You can see that we're only outputting about 80 watts. Uh, the 80 watts are just kind of whatever is on inside of our bedrooms. Ceiling fans stay on 100% of the time in all three bedrooms. And then whatever we have plugged in into the wall, right? So clocks, uh, there might be some chargers plugged in that aren't presently charging anything. Uh, so they might be leaching power. Uh, there are a couple of TVs that are off, but they're still uh, leaching power. So that's about what we stay at in terms of uh, just the average everyday normal bedroom usage is right around uh, 80 watts or so. Uh, so that's like a constant. Anything above that is going to be from our other circuit, which is going to be in uh, the, the addition. Our addition includes a master bathroom, a hallway, uh, and then a, a walk-in master closet. So, um, yeah. So right now, again, we're at 1,035 watt input, 81 watts, 80-ish watts being used, and our battery is, is at about 83% charged. Once this gets to 100% charged, uh, this is going to clip the amount of power coming in and really it's going to just uh, be able to keep up with what's currently being used and then uh, keep enough coming in to just keep the battery topped off. But we're not going to see a continuous 1,030-ish watts of power coming in. It's going to clip, like I said. So um, as I previously mentioned, I do have that uh, additional battery coming. That'll be attached to one of the ports here on the side of the Pecron. It's over here on the side and I can't show you at the moment. So I'm curious to see how the amount of power that I've got from the solar panels will be able to keep up with our current usage uh, and then keeping those batteries topped up. Um, if it's able to keep up with both of those, then I'll be able to flip on that additional circuit and be able to run our furnace on this thing um, continuous. The only thing I have a, a real concern about is winter time here in Michigan, because in winter, most of the time it's overcast and I want to see what our input looks like uh, for solar. And if we're able to keep up with the amount of usage, uh, in addition to the usage we'd be seeing from adding the furnace on uh, to this as well. Now when the furnace is running with what we presently have for the bedroom usage, we see this jump up to uh, 500 and some watts. It's just over 500 watts. So the furnace isn't using a terrible amount of power, but uh, in the winter time, obviously, you're, it's going to be running more and more often, so it's going to be draining this battery uh, faster. So that's where I'm hoping the additional battery, right, essentially double the amount of storage uh, for power, um, will be able to pull from that to kind of keep the keep the furnace going. But uh, I'm really hoping that the uh, solar panels will be able to keep up with that. Now, obviously, I have the option of inputting some additional solar. I'm not going to do that. For the setup I have, I'm just sticking with the one solar array. So we're gonna see how that works. But um, yeah, here's hoping that I'm able to uh, keep up with the amount of usage uh, and I'm able to use this to power the furnace as well. All right, well, I think that's it. If you have any questions for me on my DIY solar setup, uh, please let me know in the comments below and I'll uh, do my best to answer those for you.